Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com, and today we are talking about going paperless with the Garmin E-Trek series of GPS units. Now, the Garmin E-Trek series are some of the most popular GPSs used today by geocachers, and for good reason. Number one, they're really inexpensive. They're some of the most inexpensive GPSs you can get, and number two, they're extremely rugged. I mean. They're waterproof, you know, and they're designed to take a fall or two. So they tend to be very popular amongst geocachers. But the one downside, the one feature they don't have that just about every geocacher wants is paperless capability. In other words, to take the name, the description, the hints, the logs, all that good stuff, and put it onto the GPS. Natively, the Garmin e tracks units do not have that capability. Now, one question I keep seeing pop up all over the internet, all over the forums, people want to know if they can take their E-Trex units and make them paperless. And a lot of people say, no, no, you can't do this. But today I'm going to show you a trick that will allow you to take the paperless data and put it onto the Garmin e units. Now, before we get started, I do want to preface this by saying that unfortunately the tip I'm going to show you does not work in the entire line of e units. The trick I'm going to show you, it needs a feature in the e called Custom POIs, otherwise known as Custom Points of Interest. And unfortunately, not all of the e units have this feature. In fact, to my knowledge, only seven of them do. So, on the screen right now, you can see these four right here. These are the ones that are currently sold in stores. The e Legend HCX, the Vista HCX, the Venture HC, and the Summon HC all have this capability. There are also three discontinued models that have this capability as well. The Vista CX, Legend CX, and Venture CX. Those are, to my knowledge, the only seven of the e units that have this capability. If you have one of the other e units, the more lower end ones, unfortunately you're not going to be able to do the trick I'm telling you about. If you guys end up finding out that some of those other units do have custom POI feature, or maybe if Garmin is nice and enables it through a firmware update, let me know. Post in the comments and let me know that. But to my knowledge, these are the only seven units currently the, on the e line that have this capability. Um, another thing I want to bring up is I know at least two of these units, the Venture HC and the Summit HC, when they originally shipped from Garmin, did not have the custom POI feature enabled. Garmin later enabled that through a firmware update. So my recommendation is no matter which of these GPSs you're using, make sure you go to Garmin's site and update them first to the latest firmware to make sure that they are ready to go. Another thing is the newer Garmin e units, the e 10, 20, and 30 that are coming out, and I'm sure they're going to have some more that are coming out after that, already have paperless capability built into them. So you will not need to use the trick I'm about to show you. They natively will have paperless capability, so you should just be able to drop your pocket queries on them, and they will be able to do paperless out of the box. So the trick I'm going to show you only applies to these seven e GPS units. So assuming you guys have one of these seven GPS units and you have all the firmware updated and ready to go, I need you guys to download two things. The first thing is going to be on Garmin site something called the POI Loader. You can find it at garmin.com slash products slash POI Loader. It's a free download. Go ahead, download it, install it. The second thing I need you guys to download is GSAC, also known as the Geocaching Swiss Army Knife. Again, they have a free version. Head over to their website, gsac.net, download, install that piece of software, and once you have those two things installed, you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how all this works. Now, I'm also going to assume for this tutorial that you guys are already familiar with how to get geocaches or pocket queries into GSAC. If you're not familiar with it, I recommend you go to my website, cashfreak.com. I did an entire series of tutorials on GSAC, but really the only two you need to go back and watch are the first two. With that information, that'll show you how to load pocket queries and geocaches into GSAC, which is what you're going to need to know how to do for this tutorial. So once you guys have pocket queries or geocaches installed in GSAC that you want to put on your e GPS, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go over to the GSAC Macro Library Index, which you can find at gsac.net slash board slash macroindex.php. And as luck would have it, the very first macro listed, the 60 CSX POI, is going to be the one we're going to be using. So you can go ahead and click on it. 
and you can scroll all the way to the bottom and go to the last updated version that is available and the one I'm looking at right here the last version available is version 1.23 you can go ahead and click on it and install it once you get the macro installed it'll show up in your run macro list again it's called 60CSXPOI.GSK we're going to select it and we're going to click on run This is going to bring up the box where it will show you a ton of information that you can actually put on your GPS. You can put hints, logs, descriptions, all that stuff on your GPS. I recommend keeping it as simple as possible and I will explain why in a minute. So for right now, all I'm going to put on to my eTrex GPS, I'm going to put the cache name and the long description and I'm going to leave it at that. I also want you guys to go into advanced options you need to put a location for where the POI files are going to be saved to. I selected my desktop for them to be saved to. I also want you guys to select the checkbox that says use smart name as primary title on each screen. I also want you to check the use abbreviations to reduce the number of screens per cache. And I also want you to use the sort the GPSR screens in numerical order. Once you get all those selected, you can return. Once you get back to the screen, you can go ahead and hit continue. Now, depending on how many caches you guys have in your pocket query that you're running, this part can take a couple minutes, so just let GSAC do what it needs to do, and whenever this box goes away, you should be all set, and we'll move on to the next step. Once the macro is done running, that box will go away, and at that point, you can minimize GSAC and any other screens that you have open. And you can see here on my desktop, I now have this new file here. It's called csxpoi.csv. This is now the file that contains all of our paperless information we're going to send over to the eTrex. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the POI loader we downloaded from Garmin's website. Once it opens up, you can click Next. It's going to ask you where you want to save your POIs to. We're going to select Garmin device. Hit Next. Once you get to this screen, it should automatically detect your GPS as long as it's on and plugged into your computer. If for whatever reason it doesn't show up here, just turn off, turn back on the GPS, uh, plug it back into your computer, and click on Find Device, and it should pop up in here. Once you have it selected, you're going to hit Next. The next box that comes up, we are going to select the Install New Custom POIs on your device checkbox and click Next again. The next box that comes up, we are going to point it towards the folder that contains that file. And if you remember, I saved it to my desktop, so that is already selected here. If this isn't selected by default for you, click Browse and navigate to the folder that actually holds that file that we just created. Down here, you want to make sure Express is checked, and you can click Next again. This is the part where the data will actually be sent to the eTrex, and as you can see, it is going through very quickly, so it should only take a couple seconds to make it to your device. Once you get to this screen, it means that all of the information has been sent over to your GPS, and it's ready to go. So from this point, let's hop over to the GPS, and I will show you what it actually looks like on the screen. Alright, now once you guys get your GPS unplugged, you can go ahead and turn it on. As you can see here, I'm using the eTrex Venture 8C, but this will work on any of these seven eTrex units that I showed you earlier. The screens will look very, very similar. What I want you to do is I want you to go through your pages till you get to the Find menu. And you'll see your, you now have a new icon down here at the bottom called Custom Points of Interest. If you look for this icon before we did this step, the, this icon will not show up. It only shows up once you manually go through and install custom POIs on your eTrex unit. So once you see that down at the bottom, you can go ahead and select it. And here we go. Now we are into the list of the geocaches on your unit. The first thing you guys will notice is that each geocache is probably split up into multiple names. You can see this first one here called Lot 3 has three different entries. 
The next one, the full name is called Girl in Blue. This one has six different entries, and you're probably wondering why. Well, one of the limitations of the custom POI feature is that each screen can only have a total of 88 characters. If the description or the hints or the logs, whatever you selected on the computer to put onto the eTrex, has more than 88 characters, it's going to create a new screen, one for each 88 characters. So let me go into this lot three. You can see it's going to show you the first 88 characters of the description. If I want to read the rest of the description, I have to go back, then I have to go down to the second one. And then if I want to read the third one, I have to go down to the third one. So it's kind of a pain, and I wish, I wish I had some kind of magic button I could use to put the description all on one page, but unfortunately this is just a limitation of the eTrex units and a limitation of the custom POI feature. There's really no way around this. And this is also why, if you remember earlier, I said you only want to select the information you definitely need. If you don't need hints, if you don't need logs, don't select them, because what you're, it's going to end up happening is you're going to have 20, 30 pages of information for each geocache. And you can see this one right here has six, and that's, that's, that's enough. It's kind of a pain. You have to go into each one individually, read the information, go to the screen before it, then go to the next one if you want to read the entire description. But in the end, it is definitely better than not having any paperless capabilities at all. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope this will head you in the right direction on at least getting some paperless capability if you do have one of these older Garmin eTrex units. Like I said, Garmin is about to come out with a new line of eTrex units that does have paperless capability, and you won't have to do these steps. So this really only applies to the older Garmin eTrex units. So if you guys have any comments, any additional questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments section for me. And also check out my website, cashfreak.com. I hope this guy helped you guys out. I hope it explained a little bit on how to get paperless information into your eTrex unit. And until next time, I will talk to you guys later.